In today's video, I'm going to talk about uh, specifically hinges, but also the range of hardware that you have to know about as a fitted furniture maker. If you're already doing this kind of work, I wouldn't be surprised if somewhere in your workshop or office, you've got a stack of brochures like that. You've got your Hayfilies, one of the big ones, but then you've got Blum, Hetich, various other hardware suppliers. You get a commission, it needs some sort of a fancy hinging door or a lift up flap or something like that. And you're constantly looking at these brochures to find the best solution. So if we just stick for now with, with uh, doors, we at Freebird have narrowed our, our hinge range down to certain types of hinge, which we've, we've got a little crib sheet for, and this is the, the Blum range. So you've got your um, straight arm, your cranked hinge, which we use for alcove units a lot, and your very wide angle hinge, and each of them can vary uh, between sprung or catched, which just holds closed, uh, Blue Motion, which is soft close, that's the Blum name for, for, for soft close, or Unsprung, which works with a touch release mechanism, so it just swings open once it's released. And what I'm going to do today is introduce you, well, introduce you now to, so this is Mike, Mike Harney. Good afternoon. Uh, Mike's from Sugatsune, and uh, I'm going to put this camera down, actually, because we can now um, look at the, the other camera up there. Now, if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you might remember that I did a comparison between Blum, Hetich and Sugatsune hinges. What we're going to do today is look a bit more in depth at the Sugatsune range. But first, Mike, would you like to tell us a bit more about who, what, what Sugatsune is uh, as a company, how, how it started and anything you'd like to share, really? Sure, of course. Thank you very much. So, Sugatsune has been going since 1930. Mm -hmm. We're a Japanese manufacturer. Um, we're often making innovative products, providing solutions for can be complex designs or alternative designs. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're always looking at new products, we're always introducing new ideas and just basically providing solutions for, for people like yourself who the customer's always looking for something different. We're aware of that, you're aware of that, let's see what we can do to help you um, fulfil your bespoke requirements. Okay. We were talking earlier, the thing that, that first brought me to Sugatsune was I was looking for a, a short uh, a type of a lid stay. It was for a media unit with a very small drop down flap that wanted to look like a drawer front. Yes. And I couldn't find from my usual go to place, Hayfully, I couldn't find an appropriate flap, or if I could, it wasn't soft close. Yeah. And so then I, I heard about Sugatsune, I got a, a brochure, and this, this was one of the first things that we used. Um, what you were saying to me earlier was that is a lot of people's experience of Sugatsune and you're maybe trying to break into the more uh, standard products and compete, frankly, compete with Blum yes. with their range of hinges so people could come to you for their standard products too. That's right. So yeah. the unusual, like this particular stay here for, uh -huh. the, for the small unit, is why people come to us in particular. Yeah. So the, do these two do a similar thing. This particular one is designed for a media unit where, like you say, a draw is only a hundred maybe, uh -huh. and the height of the unit is imperative for the stay to work. You need a short stay. Okay. Now, the competition do these stays, but not in this size. Right. And this this is a fairly short arm stay, isn't it? But not as short as as that other one. Right? Correct. And we do we do these in a varying um, strengths and sizes and finishes as well. Okay. We said we'd focus on the hinges. So, shall we just have a look at your, your offering of hinges and, again, how they compare to Blum, which I've got here to show side by side? Of course, yes. So, this is our Olympia hinge, mm -hmm. which is very, very similar to the Blum hinge. And its bore size is the same, its body is about the same sort of size, and the plate looks similar as well. I could just offer these up again, couldn't I? And it's, it's something that I mentioned in the video where I was fitting a wardrobe and trialling both these hinges on it, is that, although I, I'm a... I'm a fan of the Hetich hinges. Uh, the good thing about the Sugatsune ones is, is the drilling uh, positions are the same as Blum. So that to me was a big benefit. It was, the, it was the holes next to the cup that are the same spacing between Blum and Sugatsune, whereas they're not with Hetich. And the, the other thing now I remember it was I quite liked the flat top because that allows you to put a straight edge to help line your hinges up, which again, Hetich doesn't do. Okay. So, the main differential between our hinge and the Blum Blue Motion is mm -hmm. that with the Blum, it's usually a soft close on or soft close off. Um, ourselves, we have a rotary damper 
and the rotary damper, which is at the back of the body of the hinge here, has a five speed adjuster. So each hinge can be adjusted five speeds. Two hinges, 10 speeds per door. Because no door is the same size and weight, they all close differently. To be able to have 10 different speeds gives you that availability mm. to make it close as you wish. And how do you adjust that from lowest to highest? And it is, it's a low setting, not an off setting, isn't it? That's Compared correct. Compared to the Blum, which is, you, you've got a soft close setting, which you can just click off. And next time you close that, just clicks off. And then it's just like a sprung hinge. That's right. Ours is always on. Mm. It's just the speed that you vary. And it's this simple little lever on the top. They're literally five tiny little notches in between each one. Uh, so they're quite, it's quite a small range of, of movement because I think that threw me when I was, I was de demonstrating it a bit off the cuff on the previous video. Yeah. And I thought that rotated further. So, so quite subtle little clicks there. Do you want to just do that again with me quite close up to it? One, two, three, four. I think I missed the first one because that... I see. Yes, yes. Okay. But then in a way, it doesn't matter exactly where you are on the number of clicks as long as it feels right you're, absolutely you're trying to get the door it's adjusting to... it to how it feels to yourself yes. to your requirements um, and this can be shown quite simply through closing at this speed uh -huh. and just for example i will click it completely the opposite way bear in mind there is one at the bottom as well the speed difference on just one hinge adjusted is quite a lot yes and of course that's a very light door so you've got the weight of the door I'm interested you talk about it in terms of speed. Um, I, I didn't know that would be the terminology in terms of the softness. Do, does it, Would it close, I'm assuming it would close faster with a heavier door Absolutely. at a given setting. Absolutely, so the heavier yeah. the door, the, the, more, the more strength you want within the damper to slow the door down. Right, yes, okay. Okay, so then thinking in terms of the range, so I settled on Blum because, largely because of availability, um, also the it's so well known and there was also an aspect of I quite liked the ethos of the company it was, it was a range of factors really to be honest probably the main one being ease of, of availability particularly because I have a supplier who will sell me Blum products and Hayfully products and most of what we get comes from one or other of them yes so do, would you like to try and win me over um, as to why I would move to Sagatsune for for hinges. So so starting sorry, sorry John, starting with the range. Can I get the range I want? So we've got our straight arm in the sprung blue motion and unsprung. We've got our cranked one which just throws the door in from the frame again with the variations and we've got our wide angle. So would you just like to run us through what you do in terms Absolutely, of that? Absolutely of course. So with our new Olympia hinge, mm -hmm. this is our new brochure and it gives you all the advantages and all the uh, the product specifications required. The standard 19mm overlay comes in two opening angles, 105 and 85. And the reason we've done an 85 is if two cabinets open back to back, the handles don't knock into each other or it doesn't knock against the wall. Okay. So an advantage of a slightly different opening angle. Okay. We then have a 14mm overlay, the 9mm overlay, and also, as you call the cranked, we call the inset hinge. Oh, so you have you have two different overlays in between the full insets absolutely okay. so it's an extra one to the range as well i wasn't aware of that now within the actual hinge range as well there is the dampened version which i'm showing you here mm -hmm. as you called them the cranked and the uh, um, uh not the cranked the uh free swing yes unsprung unsprung yeah. sorry sprung we call them catched and okay. unpatched yes but again we have those in the range as well so you don't have to have the damper they can be free swinging okay but again they come in all the different range required now with this hinge as this is brand new to us and we're looking at different products we have also adapted it for glass doors with okay. different finishes mm -hmm. so it's literally a cut out in the glass door and the hinge clamps to whichever finished faceplate you may require Okay. Um, there is also a heavier duty version designed for even heavier doors. Mm. It will work on thicker doors. Um, this is... And we're not, we're not talking yet about this, which we're going to no. come on to, which is the very 
heavy door in That's correct. Right. Okay. So it's a, it's a mid-range in, in that respect, but it does go slightly higher in its specifications uh -huh. um, on the fact it will hang up to a 34 mil thick door. Okay. And at the beginning, we show that it can hold an 18 kilogram door, which is something that these hinges, usually it's outside of their capacity. Okay. And so that's, that's to do with the build quality of the hinge, but is that also the geometry of the opening angle that allows the thicker door not to hit what it's next to? The trick behind the thicker door is actually the cup size is slightly bigger. Okay. Because, because there's more meat taken out that it attaches to the door, it allows for a heavier hinge. I see. Now, being Japanese, we've tested these. They probably will work slightly heavier mm -hmm. than this, but we always um, err on the side of caution. Okay. So, with the Olympia hinge, I've shown you the a speed adjuster at the top here. There are a couple of other differences that we have done with this particular hinge. And the first one is that the mounting plate has changed. Okay. If you can see here, normally there's like a, an arm that you okay. would catch with the hinge. Yes. So you would rotate the hinge past and it pulls and clips on. The beauty of ours being straight is that as long as the hinge is somewhere near, it just clips on. So would you say that's easier than the Blum I would method? say the whole idea is to make it easier to fit the door. Because I did, I did find that it went on very nicely. Now this is the Blum I'm looking at now. So that's, that's how that catches on. It needs to be located yes. before it clips in. Oh I see, so it doesn't need to be located at the front in the same way. Correct, so as long as it's somewhere near Oh, I hadn't quite grasped that. Okay. It just clips on. Can we I'll just flip that up again and I'll just have a good look at that. So, so there's just less what less of a catch there, or it, it sort of works its way in, does it? It's normally this front edge, isn't it? Oh, oh it is it's, it is clipped. So that would be the that would be the blum. Yeah. That's the front edge there. Okay. So you're saying you don't you don't have to hook into there. That's correct. Just place it's it somewhere and it drops near. Down. I, I see what you're saying now. Yeah, because there was a chamfer. There was more of a chamfer, wasn't there, for it just to drop in there. Yep. Okay. Okay. And the other thing is that, and I know Blum do do this. This central adjuster will send the body up and down the mounting plate, rather than removing the screws from the mounting plate to adjust where the hinge sits. So which makes it lots more movement for you on site yes, to fit. Yes, I see. Um, and again, when I when I used that, it felt smooth, um, is it marginally better, I would say, than what I tried with Blum. And the reason behind this is that this plastic bit here, rather than it being all completely metal, as plastic goes across the metal, there's less friction. I see. And that's why it feels okay. smoother. Okay. It's all been thought through carefully, hasn't it? Absolutely. That's the whole point of this particular hinge. Yes. Well thought out. Okay. And because Sugatsune and Lamp they have a long period of expertise in, in soft clothes, dampening, that sort of thing. That's and they, right. they have specialist products with that, don't they? Yes, yes, we've been okay. manufacturing dampers since the 60s. Okay. So controlling motion is where we say we specialise. Okay. And just, I suppose, to clear up something again from that previous video where I was off the cuff explaining things but not too clued up, I noticed that on the Blum system, you have built in here what I'm, I'm guessing is effectively a rotary damper because I see there is a little round thing there. On the Hetich ones, which I haven't got out, there's more like a, a, a piston shaped thing in the body of the hinge, which made the body of the hinge bulkier. Can you explain to us what, what the mechanism here is and, and how it dampens? Of course. Um, basically, yes. this part here is the rotary damper. Yes. And because it's so small and fits here within the body, the body of the hinge can therefore be smaller. With the Hetich big piston mm. inside, they have to have a large body to contain this. Um, Blum have a similar option, but it's either on or off with theirs. Yes. The, the special technology that's taken us so long to, to make this is to be able to have the adjusting adjustment of the speed of the rotary damper in its position. Okay. And it is that is are there springs involved in there? I might sound very eager when asking these questions. Is it a sort of fluid? What, do, you, do you know what it's, the damping? It's, it's a fluid rotary damper. Is what okay. it is. Okay. Shall we move on to something else? Absolutely. Um, for the applications where people are using a lot of these particular hinges, mm -hmm. four or five on a door, sometimes it can look unsightly. Mm. 
These hinges are designed for doors 600 wide, capacity of six to eight kilos normally. That's pretty standard. There's nothing exceptional can be done there. Um, however, at Sugatsuni, we like to do things differently. We have our heavy duty hinge, which we call the J95. And whereas two of these hold six to eight kilos, two of these will hold 25 kilos. So quite a step up. It's, it's a very big step up. Um, if you compare the size of a standard hinge, you can see they are a lot bigger. Yeah. Now, from this working sample, it is a Perspex that we've attached it to. We're showing that we have adapted it for glass. Okay, but which it, was the same thing you were showing we could do with them. Correct, yep. but its initial um, target audience was ca normal cabinetry and, and for wood. Okay. Um, again, the bore size here is slightly deeper and it is a 40 mil cup, so it's bigger than usual. Mm -hmm. Um, it's designed to hold a door 900 wide. And will it fit an 18 millimeter door? Because I, when I first saw these, I think I saw them at a show and they were on a 35 millimeter internal room door and yeah. I thought that's what they were for. Will it? Will the cup depth fit in an 18 mm It will indeed. The depth is, is 14 mil, so 18 okay. is, is fine. That's no problem. Um, and like I said, two will hold 25. We've tested three to 40 kilograms. Okay. So as soon as you start to put glass or mirror on a door and you start mm. increasing the weights, the standard hinges struggle and you you find over time that they wear and they- Yes, or drop and the gaps get too tight and things like that or, or offline. Mm. So yes, it's a big hinge, but on a big door, it's not out of place. I see. Yeah, okay. And what's what's the mounting mechanism like? Is it? I think it's a different thing to this, isn't it? How do you get it on and off the mounting plate? It's very similar to the Blum. Okay. Um, it's the old style of... Do you want to show, show us it coming on and off? Okay, so we have one cover cap here, one cover cap over the mounting plate here. I see. And then it's the standard lever that removes the hinge okay. from the body. And then in, in line with the, the weight bearing, you've got extra fixings, of course. So that's, that's four going into the board, isn't that's it? That's right, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, a nice little added security feature for this particular hinge. If you're hanging a heavy door, the last thing you want is for it to drop and hurt anybody. Yes. So with this cover cap over the top, although I can reach the lever, I can't, I can't press it to release I the see. door. That's a great idea. I have to remove this to be able to click the hinge off. I see. And of course that's not a concern on a wardrobe for a standard hinge because you don't expect someone to be inside there. Correct. But if, it, if you're using it as a partition room door or something like that, then you, that, that's a risk, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. So okay. we've thought about that. Okay. Um, it's, it's not for everybody. It's not for everyday use, I wouldn't have said, but there's definitely a market for this product mm. when you have that application. And it's good to know it's out there, isn't it? And that's, that's what I like about learning about these uh, alternative hardware suppliers, if we could call them that, just realise how off-centre we are, is uh, just having in your repertoire the knowledge that if you got a job with a big heavy door, this would be an option. And sometimes that affects the decisions you make at the design stage. I think early on, I'd go to see customers and they'd say, could you do this? And there's things I might have said, no, you can't do that because the hinge wouldn't take it or whatever. That now with knowing what's out there, I could say, yes, we could make that work for you. So I hope this, this all helps you get more of a flavour for, for, what, for what you can get hold of in terms of hinges. So just moving on, I think briefly to another type of hinge that Sugatsune do, would you like to show us this one? Of course, this is what we call the HESS 3D. Okay. And um, people would look at this hinge and remember it as the old engineering SOS hinge. SOS hinge, that's, that's the name I think of. Is, is that a brand name then, SOS? SOS was a brand, yes. Okay. Um, and everybody liked the hinge and what it offered, but the problem they had is there was no adjustment. Now this type oh. of hinge gives you three-way adjustment. Okay, well, do, do show us. So it does, if I remove the cover caps, it does show there are little fixings and little screws to adjust each and every way. Okay, so they're hex, uh, Allen key type. Allen key ones, type, yes. yes. So it, it does require routing out mm -hmm. um, and then screwing in and you can adjust them. The beauty of ours compared to the competition is they split into two leaves which means you can put one half in the frame, hmm. one half in the door, hang the door while it hangs in position, you tighten and adjust. Oh, okay. Now, as you can see from this little working sample, 
This is the smallest of the range. It's into an 18 mil carcass in both directions. Mm -hmm. So it is possible. Oh, I see. So yeah, it goes in that way as well. Right. Okay. Because I, I, I haven't actually clocked that. I've most often seen them sort of in panels like that. Yeah, that's okay. right. And that's the normal way you would do them. We've got this working sample this way to show you it is possible. Okay. And so how deep does that go into that board? Is, there must be not a lot, not a lot of material. There left isn't a lot that. left. It's around 15 millimeters. Okay. But it's doable. It is doable, mm. absolutely. So we provide a, a template for you to be able to make a jig to put these particular products in. Again, we know that the jigs can be expensive, uh -huh. but people of your talent are, are easily capable of making a jig to be able to make them yeah. work. Okay. Now these come in a range of colours and sizes, mm -hmm. up to full uh, fire door rated size, and two, okay. two will hold 100 kilograms. So mm. from the very small to the very large. But it's right. a lovely concealed hinge. It is nice. It's nice looking. And the cover caps do help. Absolutely. Definitely better with them on. Well, this video has been, I think, educational in lots of ways. It's been educational for me in that I probably need to improve my recording hardware and my methods. It's a lot easier, I find, holding a camera and knowing where to stand and what to do. But uh, I do hope it's been useful. And so, Mike, thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. And uh, we, we agreed that if there's any interest for these products then do go ahead and get in touch with Mike because he's given up his time to make this video um, so do let him get the credit uh, you can freeze frame that and uh, just get in touch with any questions you've got about any of the Sugatsuni hardware that's available okay thanks again thank you lovely that's good